episode 24. First today we pay a visit to the Limerick Animal Welfare Centre at Kilfinnan, where Marie Quirk showed us around the 23 acre facility. Limerick Animal Welfare was founded in 1983, but previous to that, there were three or four ladies in Limerick City who had met up at night time. They were all feeding dogs on the street, and they came together, got to know each other, and started rescuing dogs off the street. It progressed from there to actually vaccinating the dogs and rehoming them. They would keep them in kennels. They actually boarded them in some boarding kennels nearby and again it progressed from there. All of the dogs at that stage would have been in foster homes. I personally had mum and pups at my house. I looked after them until the pups uh, were big enough to be rehomed and then the mum would be rehomed. That is how it worked at that stage. Since then we have obviously bought the new facility here. We started with the building just here beside us which is the dog isolation unit. This is what we're still working out of unfortunately. We have a new building but unfortunately we don't have the funds to actually finish it but in time we will. Hopefully this year we intend to open some section of it. We also have a cattery here in the sanctuary and we have 77 cats there in the premises at the moment. They're all vaccinated, neutered and they're all ready for their new homes so if anybody wants to rehome a cat they just contact us. There's, um, there's a lot of ways people can help us. Obviously there's volunteering. A lot of people come here and they volunteer here. They do some work for us. We have TY students. We have just ordinary volunteers come in the weekends. We also have TUS who fund people coming here. They work here. We've had six people already here. Without them we would be lost really because a lot of them are men and they do a lot of the heavy work with the bigger animals, the horses, the donkey, uh, the pigs and all of those animals out there. Uh, the students that come in are fantastic. We also have a group of people that come from time to time from different companies. Uh, recently we had a group that came and they painted the cattery for us. The whole building was painted on the outside which badly needed to be done. Uh, you can also donate to us online. We have a Limerick Animal Welfare page. It's www.limerickanimalwelfare.ie. We have a Facebook page. It's just Limerick Animal Welfare. We also have a rehoming and lost page as well. So if you lose your animals or find an animal, you can upload them there and we will try to get them back to their owners. It's a huge problem in the country, of course, with nobody putting a tag on a dog or microchipping. And it's something that we promote all of the time. We have 22 acres here. We have different fields for the different horses, obviously. The buildings are on site here, but we have fields across the road here. And we also have fields at the very back of this building. Uh, we service Limerick County and Limerick City. We have helped with animals from the surrounding counties as well from time to time. Well, running costs at the moment are humongous here. We are running at 44,000 a month. And that includes absolutely everything from feeding to wages to light, heating, uh, dog training, everything. Absolutely everything. Of course, we have neutering costs, veterinary costs. We would have huge operations from time to time. A lot of dogs come into us, particularly lurchers come into us in very bad state. We get greyhounds here as well, which come in in bad nick as well. So we have to take those to the vet in the spot and some of those operations could cost up to a thousand euros. Some of them have to go for treatment in Dublin. At the moment, at the moment we have 55 dogs, we have 77 cats, 14 rabbits, we have 9 equines, 14 rabbits, we have a few fowl, um, a peahen and what else have we? One pig. TUS has been a great source of, of help to us. We've had, as I told you, six people who came here to help with us. Uh, They're all men. Uh, one of the boys, Anthony, has come back again as a volunteer and helped us and he's 
not here today but he's been here for the last few days again without him we would be totally lost because we need those boys to help us with the heavy work most of us are women here we've one men working on the place Billy Howra is a great back up to us as well they are coming here now as well and they're going to help us to lay out a walk around the sanctuary for people to come and to visit and hopefully we will have a visitor centre here as well we hope to get some more two skies now online very shortly as well they're fabulous they have helped with feeding of animals cleaning of kennels uh, painting we've had maintenance men here who have helped with uh, plumbing uh, erecting shelves and basic stuff which needs to be done but unfortunately we don't have the skills ourselves About six, six or seven years ago, I started uh, this in uh, in a small way, and at that time we had a f we formed a little club called Celtic Stigmax in 2006. There was only about 10 or 15 members that time. And since 2006, we've been going around to workshops in different parts of the country and we have top class stick makers showing us how to do the work, all this type of work. And our club has grown. T to the, today, I'd say we would have about 70 members. And the members get look for material for stick making and I uh, source it out in different places and they call to me and they get bits and pieces. Uh, but our club is is getting stronger and we also have started recently competitions amongst ourselves and we hold different little shows during the year and recently we have gone to places like Bor Game Fair and Boris Game Fair and there's one in Fermoy and at each of those game fairs we have these competitions and I think it was last year for the first time ever was the first all Ireland stick competition and it was held in Bor and we had several there were I think there was two hundred and thirty sticks in the show and I think about 25 or 30 of them came from lads in the north of Ireland and we have a strong contact with them. They have a good club in Bambridge and we go up and down to them and they come down to us and as a group we're getting on terrific and everywhere we go we have a selection of sticks and we can get the opportunity of looking at them and admiring them and uh, seeing what the other lads are doing uh, and um, that way with the help of the top stick makers, we try to improve all the time and your ambition is to make the next stick better than the last one. Uh, we'll make a start with the buffalo horn. A buffalo horn that comes in from India through a supplier in Scotland. And that horn will be used for a handle of one of my sticks. <laughs> First of all, we'll take a little off of it into this shape and then we'll put it in the boiler and heat it up for at least an hour and it'll become lovely and flexible. Goes into our former here on the bench and squeezing and tightening up, it will become that shape when it let it cool down for half an hour. And we go on from there and we trim it down to this shape. And it, that's ready now for going on to our stick. This is the end product. 
after putting it onto the stick and filing it down, sandpapering it and then polishing it, that material ends up as a shepherd's crook. And the, sh the idea of the shepherd's crook is that the shepherd could actually catch his sheep around the neck and pull him in. And that was one thing. And the second thing then, in the night time, if he was looking after his flock and he was going one missing, or if there was one having a lamb or anything, he could stick the stick in the ground and he could hang his lamp on that while he was looking after his sheep. To move on to the second material, it's almost identical except it's a ram horn. A ram horn not for sheep. I get those in the galties and different people that have that keep sheep. Again we have to do a, a system of boiling, softening, squeezing in the plates and a pushing, pushing in all the way until it becomes something like this. And we again we put it around the farmer and we end up with a, with a handle. That's the material for, to make another stick. And the end result again, almost the same type of stick with a different handle. The third material that I use on a full-time basis are antler off for deer to make a thumb stick, to make a walking stick. <coughs> and uh, those antlers are off the wild deer, people shooting deer and that's how we get them. Those are the <coughs> Now that's the end result. You can make a nice walking stick for a person to put a bit of fair bit of weight on. <coughs> and, and I will cap the ends with a little bit of the black horn that I showed you already. And we'll glue those down and then polish them up. The stick itself would be hazel. 12 months that would be cut and we can steam them with a steamer over there and straighten them and then you set about putting the handle on the, the, the handles that I made there already you bore a hole up along like that and then you make a dowel on top of the stick <coughs> it is easy enough to make those dowels and you put the handle on like that and you glue them up using a strong glue. The next thing to complete the stick then you just put a little ferrule on here, copper ferrule. They come from our suppliers as well or a brass ferrule mostly and you glue that on and you fi finish your stick then with a coat of yacht varnish and some people use oil. I prefer varnish. It puts a lovely shine to finish the stick and that would be the complete shepherd's crook. It's a chestnut, that one is, black thorn, a bit of holly, and you can use any of those and they all make lovely walking sticks. Black thorn. Black thorn is very popular and can be found in any the hedges through Ireland or through Limerick. Black thorn is a beautiful stick to and I never paint them black. I love this red hue, the natural colour that they grow and just varnish them. If you can find the naturally grown handle like that, it makes a very, very suitable walking stick. Holly can be very nice wood too, a very nice stick and lovely when it's varnished in its natural state. Again, we look for a little bit of wood on top of it to make a nice little handle like that. We go on now to a cow horn, an ordinary cow horn, and I heat it and I bend it here and join the stick in the same way as I was explained already. And that makes a lovely walking stick. It's capped with a bit of the buffalo horn, that's what we call capped. This type of one then is ash and <laughs> That one is ideal for hill walkers where you can put on a wristband and it like that and you have a little handle from the hill. It has a nice little spike on top of it for stones and you won't slip on the stones. And on the very top of it we have a little compass in case you get lost. <laughs> You'll always find your way home. This is what we call a market stick. 
And I think the idea of the market stick was people used to use it and they'd lean on it like that and watch at a market or a show or any place like that. It's <coughs> and I have these finished with a wood handle. But that one is apple tree and this one is bur elum and you have a great variety of timber that you can use between oak spalted beech is another lovely one which brings out a lovely lot of patterns that's what you call spalted beech and again a shepherd's crook when you made out of that carving is very popular with some of our stick makers <laughs> and to carve out a duck or a little dog and put it on top of your stick like that is quite nice work it takes a bit of patience and it takes a bit of time but it <coughs> it's, it's very it's, it's nice work another unusual stick is where we get a woodbine growing up along naturally growing up along a hazel stick and it digs into it and makes that kind of a shape now that's very rare and hard to get and you would travel miles and miles before you'd find one of those but they make a very rare stick a most unusual stick but very pretty is a bit of the yellow furs, the furs bush as we call them and I haven't that one finished yet but I will put organize a handle on it but it has a lovely pattern and a lovely finish and a very good strong stick as well bamboo was always very popular and they make a lovely stick very popular with cattle men and farmers long ago bamboo is scarce now and a lovely bamboo that came in from Glenstall in Moreau turned out to be a beautiful stick and the black the black thorn <laughs> in, ca in case <laughs> you need a weapon <laughs> it can be useful <laughs> if the wrong people come after you <laughs> here's one that's widely used by people shooting deer and they often leave the gun on top of it and <laughs> shoot the deer I call this for a, a fishing stick if you're going into the river and there's a flood in it and you want to do a bit of casting you find out in the river where the stones or where the holes are the one here for catching sheep as well this time you'd catch them by the hind leg and pull them towards you and grab them that one was a block of timber and the and the, uh, and the ash or the hazel grown up through it and to make a one piece stick that was one of the first sticks i ever made and I've held on to it, but ah, you could make a better job of it, but it didn't too bad. <laughs> now these are very popular with pony riders, horse riders, and recently I've got good demand for those, mostly from women walking their little dogs along the road, and somebody's neighbor's dog comes out, and they love to have little sticks like that, so I try and have a stick for everybody. Now we have a report on the Twinning Group's trip to Budapest with Catherine Willis. My name is Catherine Willis. I'm the Honorary Secretary for the Maru Twinning Project and have been so since the end of November 2010. So what we've been doing the last few years is every second year we have been going to each other's communities. A few years ago somebody had the idea of every third year to go to a European, another larger European city. This year we went to Budapest. So we had about 18 people that went on this trip. We stayed in accommodation three to four kilometers from the city, making it very, very handy to take public transport to wherever we go. There were a number of people who also came who, who aren't official members of the group. So this enabled them to see how we operate, how, how such a trip might, might, might go, and hopefully generate some interest so that way in the future perhaps they would join again or, or possibly host. There's a very famous Hungarian state opera house, and we met near there at the cafe, and then um, someone from their group had organized um, to meet at a lovely little restaurant, and um, we had a really, really lovely meeting there, whereas 
we mixed the tables up so we had French and Irish at all the tables and everybody seemed to socialize quite well. Even people that don't speak any French or on their part don't speak any English seem to really enjoy it and whether you communicate through sign language or pointing to the menu or just looking at each other and, and having a bit of a some understanding and a bit of a laugh and it was a lovely lovely night. Food also was a lovely surprise because so many people had said we're not sure what the food will be like and um, that turned out to be a lovely surprise. Portion sizes were amazingly huge, food was very very fresh and um, very good, very tasty. Um, so most people found it much better experience and for the average Hungarian it might be an expensive area around the tourist areas we went but for the Irish tourist in general um, I suppose we didn't find it so we found it quite reasonable so that was quite good as well. The other kinds of activities people did um, nearby in this whole area of this particular spa it's a huge huge park there's a hero square there's the National Museum of Fine Arts there are lots of little kiosks and such and little ponds, lovely gardens to walk around. Um, that's all in, in this area, which is the north part of Andrasha Avenue. Andrasha Avenue is, uh, some people call it the Champs-Élysées of, of Europe, in the, of outside of Paris, that is. Um, it's a very wide avenue, designer shops, the, the state opera house is there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to any uh, live uh, active music, neither at the Opera House nor at St. Stephen's Basilica or at any of the other churches, because what, when there was something on, we had a plan with the French. Um, when there was something on and we weren't sure about, we didn't hear about it till too late. So we just didn't get there, which was a pity, but at least we had the opportunity to go into St. Stephen's Basilica. We also had the opportunity to just look into the foyer of the Opera House and have a look around the area, which was very, very beautiful. It's a different kind of place. Um, as a city, it's growing. It's easy to get to. It's easy to get around. The public transport was amazing. If you shared a taxi, it was great. Some people managed to find the ubiquitous Irish pub, though and got to watch um, on that first Sunday that we arrived that afternoon they got to watch um, a big, um, it was a GAA match on a final so that was good for some people <laughs> um, I got there one of the nights and it was quite good it was good value and the food was, was quite good there was a mixture of everything there um, there's fashionable pedestrianized areas there are the people again very gracious, there are large market halls, um, there's a metro that runs um, parallel to the Danube and that was really beautiful at night as well. There's this place called Gellert Hill and you go up where there's the Buddha Castle, there's a place called the Fisherman's Bastion, it's this beautiful sculpture overlooking the city and you get to look down to the other side, um, to the fuller side of what's called the pest side. There's a Buddha side and a pest side, so this is the Buddha side. And as you're at the top of the hill, you get to look over and you can see everything, and it's just really beautiful. And they also do accommodate for people that may have, uh, say, some, some difficulties in walking, as in there's a funicular and um, you don't have to climb all the steps. Everybody had a, a, a really marvelous time. And the weather was glorious as well, which was an added bonus, which, which um, I suppose made most of us stay outside most of the time. I, I usually try to go to indoor museums and indoor um, types of galleries and, and whatever might be going on. As you walk by, you see a little shop or you see something interesting. And it was just so beautiful. Um, I mean, I, cho I, I always go to Museum of Fine Arts and I ended up going to the zoo because it was just so beautiful. Now we welcome Michael Carey with his first presentation of Maru News, the local news in a nutshell. Hello everybody, it's uh, Michael Carey and this is the, some notes and local news uh, for um, our viewers and um, we hope it uh, will be of interest to you and we hope to have this on a regular basis. The 
first communion boys and girls, this is for next year, coming up, 2013. Uh, there was a special uh, uh, welcoming mass for, for all the parents and all the children uh, recently. And uh, the, the, it is vitally important that we support uh, these uh, young people on their faith journey. So they really want the parents to be in on that. Now there's a senior citizens party for this year coming up on the 2nd of December. Uh, the venue is Hazes in Capamore, starting time 1 o'clock. Tickets available from committee members, Anne and Paddy Howrigan, Bridget Hazley, Baron Carmel, McAuliffe, and the priest themselves will be delighted to, to supply you with a ticket. Churchgate collection to help provide funding for our senior citizens will take place on Wednesday, on, sorry, the weekend of the 24th and the 25th of November. And uh, Mass for all our parishioners who died during the past year will be celebrated next Friday evening, November the 23rd in Maroon Church, time 7.30, and there will be a special evening of prayer, remembering and healing. It will also be an opportunity for us to remember all our loved ones. Sincere thanks from the Divine Board of Missionaries for the, uh, to, uh, for the generosity of the people in Marubor for their collection, which amounted to a very wonderful sum of um, 2,400 euros. Capamore Historical Society, in association with Continental VC, will host a talk and discussion by Gunther Walters on living in Berlin during the era of the Berlin Wall and its aftermath in St. Michael's College, Capamore, on Wednesday, November the 21st. All are welcome. And the Maru uh, Boer Annual Newsletter. This is a last call for any organization or individual with items or photographs for the newsletter for 2012. To send them in to marubook at gmail.com. Now I'll just repeat that. You, uh, you can replay it, of course. So marubook at gmail.com. Or hand it in to Sean Hogg for those who are local here. John Egan, Father Tom Ryan, and Dan Deneen as soon as possible, as the magazine will soon be going to print. Advertisements are also being taken, and that uh, if you you can discuss that, uh, and, and we leave that to, between you and the uh, publishers. And uh, there is a bereavement information evening on Tuesday, the 27th of November. And the time is 7 to 8.30, that's the, late, the last one and a half hours, and the venue is Milford Care Centre Education Department. The annual general meeting of Maru Tidy Towns Association was held recently. The following officers were elected. Chairman uh, Joe Sullivan, Secretary Anne Laumanek, Treasurer Niall Cregan, PRO Mary O'Brien. We would like to say a big thank you to the outgoing officers, Dan Deneen, Father Tom Ryan and Jim Collins. Christmas pageant. We are still looking for adults to be involved in this pageant. Please no change of date. The pageant will be held on Sunday the 23rd of December at 6.30 p.m. Please give names to Marion Neville. Her phone number is 086-888-5619. Friends of Console invite family and friends to a service of light to remember the life of their loved one who had died by suicide. This annual event will take place at 4 o'clock on Sunday the 25th of November in Bohorn and Ave Church in Torles. Guest speakers are Mr. John Lorigan. Sorry, that's Lonergan, Mr. John Lonergan and Mr. Pat Whelan. All are welcome. Father Jim Purser, C.C. Cashel and Rose Green will be presiding over this service. The Sleeve Phelan Singers annual Christmas concert will be held in Abington Church on Sunday, the 2nd of December, 5 p.m. Proceeds to St. Vincent de Paul. All are welcome. And there are set dancing classes for adults and children in Bower Community Centre on Thursdays at 7.30, costing 5 euros. Children on Friday at 5, costing 3. For the information, contact Adrian on 
937. And down finally, to complete this bulletin, we are inviting past pupils of uh, St. Joseph Secondary School in Doom for any photographs they may have of their school days that may be included in our commemorative book which will be published next year. Contact can be made with the school via email at deputy principal all one altogether at ST St. Joseph altogether. It's just ST Joseph. Yeah, that's altogether dot IE. I'll, I'll say that again now. It's deputy principal all one word at st joseph altogether dot ie or by writing to the, the school to deputy principal st joseph secondary school doon county limerick so that's our news for you uh, this week on uh, from maru bohar and uh, thank you for watching Hi, these are the Maru AFC notes for the past couple of weeks. Um, first up was the uh, club team, Maru's men's team. Uh, we exited the FAI Junior Cup last Sunday on a 7-1 scoreline to Pike Rovers. Um, however, despite the scoreline, the game was in the balance up to half-time, with Maru 1-0 down when we conceded a penalty just on the stroke of half-time. Um, Owen Hartnett got one back early in the second half to make it 3-1, to Pike, but in fairness, Pike finished strongly and they ran out convincing winners. And the club would like to wish them all the best in the future rounds of the competition. Moving on to the boys section, uh, the under eight boys defeated Galbally 2 1 with the prolific Aaron Rolston and Nate O'Shea scoring. There was great support to play also from John O'Brien, Mikey Walsh, and Richard O'Brien in this match. Our tens travelled the long trip to Capamore and lost 4 3. Aaron Rolston and a brace from Jay Ryan accounted for the three goals for Maru, with Kieran Fitzgerald and Nathan O'Shea also putting in excellent performances on the day. The result of the week had to be our under-11 boys, who had a fantastic 4-1 win away to Kilmallock. Um, Owen Madigan scored two fine goals, and Jack O'Carroll and Reno Halloran added the extras. And this is a great win for that team, fantastic result. In the under-12 boys, the lads went down 4-3 to Herbertstown, with Jack O'Carroll scoring two and Sean Fitzgerald adding the extra goal. There was very good performances in the day also from Cahal Barry and Johnny Kelly. Moving on then to the girls section, there was a number of matches played recently as well, and the under-12 girls defeated a gallant Holy Cross team 6-0. Cara Griffin and Emily Hayes scored two each, and Sarah Fitzgerald and Roisin Crow completed the scoring for Maroo. Leanne Ryan and Sarah McKellig get excelled from Maru on the day also. The 16 girls stayed top of the table following their 4-0 win over an understrength Holy Cross. Shauna Ryan and Alana Russell opened the scoring for Maru and then a double from Ashton Regan secured the points. Uh, this is four wins now from four starts for Maru and they're in a great position to go on to win this league, hopefully. Uh, Kira Maloney and Anna Ryan impressed for Maru also. Um, the club also would like to extend our sincere congratulations to Saoirse Barry and to Grania Regan on their selection and their performances last weekend for the under-15 Munster Schools team. There was further good news when Grania was made captain of the team for the weekend. Then on Sunday evening Grania was informed that as a result of her performances in the tournament she was selected to attend Irish trials this coming weekend in Dublin. I would like to say a very well done to both girls. And only two clubs in Munster had more than one player on the Munster Under-15 team. And uh, we're, we're one of those two clubs, so we're particularly delighted in the club with that. And also congratulations to St. Joseph's Secondary School in Doon as the two girls play their football there. Finally, we'd just like to say our annual draw takes place on Sunday the 16th of December in the Valley Inn. The tickets haven't gone up. They're the same price as last year. They're €5 Euros each and books of six are €25 Euros, or a book of 12 tickets is €50. Euros. There's fantastic prizes on offer again this year with a top prize of €1,000, which would come in handy for Christmas. Your support, as always, would be gratefully appreciated. Tickets are available from any team manager, committee member, or you can phone 86 810-9682 which is myself Noel Regan and you can order your tickets if you wish and uh, that's the Maru AFC notes for this week thank you
Father Lachlan Brennan completes the programme with a thought for the week. Hello and very welcome to Maru Bohar Parish. Many people have stress and worry in their daily lives, so I'd like to put to you some spiritual tips to avoid worry or stress in your daily life. Number one, stop worrying. Worry kills life. Number two, begin each day with a prayer. Number three, control your appetite. Overindulgence clogs the mind as well as the body. Number four, accept your limitations. Number five, don't be envious. It wastes time and energy. Number six, have faith in God and have faith in people. Number seven, find a hobby. It will relax your mind. Number eight, read a book and read on a regular basis. It stimulates your imagination and helps to broaden your views. Number nine, spend some time alone for the peace and solitude of silence. And number 10, try to want what you have instead of spending your strength trying to get what you want. I'll repeat the tent because it's very important. Try to want what you have instead of spending your strength trying to get what you want. God bless you all.